Chavina, are you ready? Yes. Are you filming now? Yes. Okay. Here we go. You can't be blocking that. Oh, I can't be you blocking can't be, that? No, because I've got to refer to that. You already oh. swiped it with your arm and I erased it cattle. With my ass. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. So you can move over. There you go. Like, I'm not saying you have to not be on the table, but I just want to. So, should we need to get a camera on that real quick? Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do, due to popular demand, I'm going to show you guys how to do a couple of things. Um, the first is a real quick demo, of, and this is a recipe that's up on the wall for how to do or how to make an oil glaze and what that does. Um, to a painting and how to work with it. And in order to do that, there are some ingredients I don't think you guys all have. Uh, namely, I don't think everybody has linseed oil with them. Um, I know you guys pretty much all have liquid, which is good, you need that. Uh, but you don't have linseed oil, and but I know a lot of you guys don't have Damar varnish. And what because. Is hmm? What is Damar varnish? Just a it's a varnish. It's a varnish. It's, and it's very sticky and very kind of glue-like, which is why it works so great, okay? But also why I strongly recommend that you wear some kind of, you know, latex, or, or not if you're allergic or whatever, but some kind of exam gloves. I use, uh, what do they call the nitrile um, gloves from, I just go to CVS and go to the first aid aisle, and they just have, you know, gloves. Um, and I buy them, you know, by several boxes at a time, and I go through them like crazy. I use them both for oil painting and for pastel. Um, oil painting because it's chemical and it's kind of toxic and sticky stuff. Uh, pastel is really not toxic at all, uh, but it's super messy. It gets all over your hands, and you know, I don't like getting messy. And I like when I'm done painting that instead of having to like wash it all off, I just pull these things off and I'm done. Okay, so. Get your gloves, I mean, they're really helpful. So this is what you need. You need, here's the liquid. Okay, everybody has liquid. Sorry, I have my back to the camera, but I have to let me go like that so you guys can see. I've got my liquid. This is refined linseed oil. This is the other thing that you need. Okay. You need the Damar varnish, okay. And I know some of you guys go, well, Tim said never to use varnish. Tim's talking about varnishing a painting when you're done with it, like an oil painting. When you're done, and that is basically something that has been done with oil painting for hundreds and hundreds of years. What it does is two things. It unifies the visual surface so that everything has the same kind of sheen to it. So that things that are matte and things that are shiny or things that are thick or thin, everything kind of has a universal look. The upside is it's also a protectorant, so it will protect the painting over centuries. The downside is it makes everything shiny, as those of you who have been to any like permanent collection like the Norton Simon or LACMA, if they don't hang the paintings or light them properly, it, they're, it's really distracting because they're so reflective, you're like, you know, I can't really tell what's going on. It's easier to see what's happening with a painting where it's matte, like the one that's over there uh, up against the railing. You can see the colors really clearly from a variety of angles and the light's a little more forgiving. You can buy matte varnish now. You can, and Gam, Gam, bleh, Gamblin makes it, it's called Gamvar, and it's a matte varnish. In fact, that's what I was gonna buy to do the demo, and I'm like, no, this is like, Gamvar is really a finishing varnish. This is, Damar is something that you could use for a finishing varnish, but you also use it as an ingredient to make a glaze. If you wanna do glazes and layers and layers and layers of glaze, like they did it back in the day, uh, when people had nothing better to do and like you painted all day every day of your life and you could do 50 or 60 glazes on a painting and that was normal and it's so frankly we generally uh, in the 21st century work much more quickly the whole a la prima style of painting which means which is basically kind of what Ivan's doing it's like you take a canvas you take paint go okay you don't try you're not glazing you're not mixing you're just putting the paint on and working quickly and w working while the paint is wet so I'm gonna show you, this is like a traditional uh, kind of technique, and I'm showing you because some people still use it, and specifically because Ju is working on one of her goals in this class, is to execute a self-portrait, or maybe other paintings also, that employ these processes, that it's instead of like painting, like Lucian Freud, for example, who's a great portrait painter, or Cecily Brown, someone who's more contemporary, this is like how Caravaggio would do it. You know, this is how, uh, Bellini would do it. I mean, I'm no Bellini, believe me. But this is how they used to work with oil paint. It was always glazes. Everything was really flat. They didn't build up a big impasto thick layer of paint. 
So, you need the linseed, you need the liquid, you need the damar, and I need somebody's, uh, if somebody has gamsol or terpenoid. I didn't I bring any of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I need some of that too. Um, and I need a, um, like just a flat, soft brush, like not a bristle brush, if possible. If anybody has just like a flat, like a soft, like, yeah, perfect, thank you. It was on the floor, I don't know if that's anybody's. It was just on the floor. Was yeah, this anybody's? It like yeah, it's uh, it's uh, uh, Addison's. He just showed me what I'm going to do. Why was he leaving it on the floor? Because he's doing the demos. Uh, because I don't know how to smooth it. He said. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Cool. He said he's supposed to use this kind of. Um, part of this, I, I'm gonna like go move through this blindingly quick. Some of you guys, we were talking last week, and you should never uh, eat or drink when you're doing this. <laughs> you're dealing with toxic chemicals and you shouldn't do this so do as I say how does I do um, some of you guys were asking about color theory and I guess that the only color theory class that's offered here even though I recommend it is for um, like graphic designers and stuff mm -hmm. and it, it's probably still valid and the whole idea behind glazing is employing ideas about layering and color theory and how colors mix with one another and I really can't get into that now um, I'm just, it's like you know if you put orange if you do a glaze of orange and then let it dry and then do a glaze of blue trust me it's gonna be brown okay and that's how you were able to adjust the colors of your glazes it's called complementary mixing and I, I do entire like lectures and classes on this that take a whole day so unfortunately, I can't do that because like there's too many of you guys and everyone has their own. We all have our own agendas. So um, I will kind of move through it quickly, but first we will do that. So in order to mix this stuff, you don't need, okay, I wanna stress this. You don't, I have a lot more than I need, okay? If you were gonna go out and buy this stuff and you're like, I wanna do like Cole's glazing thing, okay? You don't need this much. Okay, tomorrow, like you and you, like this linseed oil. I mean, all of these things, I, I burn through liquid pretty quickly. This stuff would last me literally for like a year, probably. I don't need that much, okay? So if you guys wanted to experiment with it, don't buy, and it's expensive. Like a bottle like this big, it's like $50, okay? So get a little one or something, all right? So for the sake of, what do I want to do? I'm going to do a glaze on the shoes just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, and she's got a nice brown underpainting. So I'm gonna do a blue, since that's what I've got, I've got a blue and an orange. So I've got a cat orange, and I've got an ultramarine blue. I'm also gonna do one, by the way, some of you guys are doing the water-based stuff, so I will do one. God, I think this stuff leaked. Um, does anybody have a rag? Can I get a rag from anyone? Yeah, there's like stuff in the bag. To yes. Thank you so much. Ooh, nice. Where's this from? It's from Blick. What did this cost you, like $30? Why don't you just an no. old t-shirt? That's what well, I do. Was... Yeah. Uh, that's I'm like, like I tell you guys, like, don't, yeah. got, don't go to Blick to get, go to Home Depot to get these things. You can get a bag of these for like $5, and it's like oh, no. this big. So. It's in the paint department? department? Or old t-shirts. How much did you spend? Yeah. And drink more How much did you spend? Yeah. It was like... Better for the environment. Well, it wasn't that expensive. And it's better for you because you're just you can reuse them for a long time before you have to get rid of them. Actually, that's an important point. I use rags for my dad; they're for free. Yeah, rags. Yeah, <laughs> you, use, you use your dad's rags; they're free. The one thing about using varnish is it will make um, if you're just doing oil paint, plain old oil paint, even with liquid in it, and you're like cleaning your brushes and stuff with the rag, you can reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. If you're using the varnish, it will like make it stiff like starch so in a, you, you'll go through the rags more quickly just so you know but anything's better than using paper towels absolutely t-shirts are great t-shirts are perfect okay anyway so i've got cat orange ultramarine blue which are also the colors that we're going to need for the flesh tone demo so i'm killing two birds with one stone um oh i'm st i still need um gamsol or uh terpenoid yeah i, I who's, who's got some so literally what I'm this is what I'm going to do okay so the recipe and this is just like a recipe thank you like for food it's like you know it's a third of everything so it's simple and I wrote it down on the board so you guys can either write it down or photograph it 
It's one-third linseed oil, one-third Damar varnish, one-third OMS. OMS means organic mineral spirits, which means turpenoid, gamsol, any sort of solvent, like not paint thinner, but like turpentine is the traditional one, but we don't use that here because it's so smelly. The Damar varnish is too, we're not supposed to use that in here, but I'm, I'm hardly using any of it, so hopefully we won't get busted. So I'm literally going to like take this, like little, like salsa cups, these are the best. Uh, you get these at Smart and Final. Um, I would never recommend that you guys become thieves, but if you go to Chipotle <laughs> or like the salsa, I sort of, I go in there and I'm like, ooh, burritos, and I, I'm like, I literally said, you know, they have the little thing, like with a little dispenser like this. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll get some cilantro, I'll get some onions, and I'm like grabbing this, I'll, I'll grab like 20 of these. And I'm like, you know what, it's Chipotle. Like, like ooh, I'm, I'm robbing from Chipotle, I'm a bad man. It's like, they're bad people for charging that much for a taco. <laughs> so I'm gonna take like I'm gonna roughly it's not a perfect thing, but I'm literally I'm just gonna mix it in here. So I'm gonna take so here's linseed oil. I'm just gonna like that. That's all I need. Okay, just like a little bit, and this is gonna still be too much. So you guys can share it if you want. I don't know. Put it back in the thing. Huh? Don't you have to match them? No. It, it, you have to be able to actually see what's going on. I know it sounds crazy, but so I've got that. Okay. The only thing that you chain that is not one third is the liquid. Okay, here's the varnish. This is the bad stuff. It's expensive and it smells terrible and it's hard to open the bottle. That's the dark. And and you'll and you guys will all, like I'm gonna put in like hardly any and you will all smell it. Yeah, I You're right on top of it. Yeah, it is. You're right. <laughs> oh, no. It's very sensitive. Okay. So that's a third Damar, a third well. linseed, and this, that. a third of this. That's why. Okay. And there, there you go. Now you can see it's kind of a cloudy little mixture. I just, I'll stir it with the back of a brush like this. Okay. And it has the consistency of water. You know, it's like, it, it's not thick or anything. All of these fluids are, might, might be a little bit thicker, but you can see, right? It's like, and it has this kind of like yellowish cast. Um, it can yellow over time. If, if just don't lay it on too thick. And again, I'm not putting enough, if you use Damar varnish in a pure way, it may yellow the painting over time. This should not, in theory, uh, allow that to happen. Now, the problem with glazing, okay, is most of us who are oil painting are, have the canvases are vertical, okay? So if I put this on Jews, and it's gonna be hard to see, but if I put this stuff on like this, right, they're drip, see the drips? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, like it's too thin. And so, yeah, you can like spread it around it or whatever if you want to. But over, like believe me, like from personal experience, it's like, yikes, you don't want this to happen. I'm just gonna wipe it down. Um, so you want to thicken it a little bit, that's where the liquid comes in. Okay, actually I'm going to use this because you want to, you definitely want to be careful with the brushes too because the Damar varnish, even in small amounts, will like mess up your brush. Because it's like glue. It basically is a, is a type of glue. Okay. So, I just want to make sure that I keep the brush clean. And get all that crap out of it. Okay. Now, it's too thick like, I mean too thin like this. So I want the liquid. Okay, the problem for me with you, it's like, why don't we just use liquid? Okay, because it kind of does the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's really thick. I always shake it first. It's thick. And for me anyway, when I'm glazing with this stuff, it dries too fast. And if I'm making paintings and I really don't care, you know, or I don't mind if it dries fast, or I'm working on a small area, sometimes I will just use liquid like right out of the bottle and it's fine. But if I'm doing, those of you like landscape people who are doing skies, or anytime you're trying to glaze a whole area to alter the color, you, you're spreading it out over a large area and you wanna kinda keep smoothing it out. So you don't want it to dry that fast because all of a sudden it's unworkable and you'll have brush strokes. So if you want it to be really smooth, you have to add some of this stuff. Just, and that's why it says liquid for consistency, meaning thick. Like, so add whatever you think is, Uh, 
Um, add whatever you think is going to work. And please tell me I brought a palette knife. What the hell? Who's got a palette knife? Damn it. I knew I forgot the glove. Bad teacher. So I'm going to add a little bit of this stuff, and I'm not going to put it right in there, because once I put it in, I can't get it out. So I'm going to drop a little liquid just along here, okay? Just a little for now. And I'm going to add it in here. That's actually probably enough. So I'm going to take this liquid and add it in here. Probably once more. And this will help thicken it up a little bit. Not that much. I need more. So basically, I want it to be kind of syrupy. Um, I don't want it to be thick and jelly like this. I want it to be syrupy. And actually, it's tough to get it to mix with the other ingredients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the brush to do the mixing. And I'm just scraping it off the sides. Very Martha Stewart. It is. It's like cooking. This is why somebody um, mentioned this once. It's like, why do painters tend to like, I don't know if this is true of you guys, but it is true that most painters are actually also pretty decent cooks or chefs. I don't mean chefs like, you know, wine chefs at a restaurant, but like, we know how to cook. And it's because like, the, you have to do this all the time. It's like one third, one third, like mix, you know, stuff, make sure the consistency's right so that it gels properly. I mean, it's just like cooking, okay? Now that's a little bit better. It's a little bit thicker. I still want it to be thicker still. I just want it to hold up so it doesn't drip when I put it on, okay? So more, what the hell, let's plop it in there. So basically I'm making a nice varnish thinner, and I don't mean thinner like, let me make sure I make that clear, not thinner like paint thinner, I'm just thinning the liquid with, and adding some varnish to it, and it works really nicely, okay? So, there, there we go, see now it's more like a syrupy, Kind of thing. It's still thin, but that actually would probably make a pretty decent glaze. Now that's a lot, okay, um, of glaze, and I, I had to do that just so you could see how I mix it. Normally, what I do is I will put this in a jar like yours, that like a, a small jar with a screw top lid, and just dump it in there and save it, and and you just use a little bit at a time. Okay, so now I want to put it on cheese. And is it dripping? No. 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 Okay. No. So it's still thin. Okay. It's still, and it won't dry right away because there's oil in it. Okay. The linseed oil keeps it from drying right away, as does the gamsol or the turpenoid. So it, you have the varnish will dry, and the liquid will dry, but it has these other agents in it that both thin it and it, it's more like a slow dry medium, and you can brush it on really thin. So this is how they used to do it back in the day. You really need very little paint to make a glaze layer, like this much. I mean like a dot, okay? And then I'm just gonna pick some up here. Actually, I'll just pour it out, what the hell? I go just a little bit, okay? Over here, like that, okay? Probably more than I need. And I just pour it out over here, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna add like not even all that orange, just a little bit, okay? And you can see it's a transparent glaze, so it won't cover up the paint. It will just give it a slightly warmer, orangier tint. It, and then the the whole key to glazing is what makes it really beautiful is it functions differently than just mixing the paint together. If you just mixed orange and brown then that, you, know, you get a solid opaque color. Right. This way you get a layer of orange, then a layer of blue, then a layer of this, a layer of that, and the light bounces as it hits the glazes, bounces through each successive layer and it makes it really jewel-like. So when you see beautiful old master paintings, those guys had it down. I'm just showing you how to do it like a rough way. I am by no means a master Renaissance glazer. Uh, but that's what they did to make those paintings look so luscious and beautiful. There's just layers and layers. You're like, how did they paint that? It's like it's like 20 layers of glaze. I mean, it takes forever. And you do it and you have to wait. That's the part that I... It's like, because it's really fun to do 
and I'm going to do like so. I'm putting this warmer. So see what happens. How long does it take to dry in comparison like to these straight day midwind? At least. Like a day, usually. Okay. Two. Sorry, really? I know it's a drag. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not recommending that you guys all do this all the time. But you know, I put it on like that, and it changes the color ever so slightly. Right? It warms it up, you know, so you can tell that it is a distinctly different kind of brown than the brown that Ju has up here. And then literally, I, that's the part I hate to say, you know, you smooth it out, and you have to keep like you know, keep an eye on it. But generally, because it's so shiny. I will look at it, you know, with the light bouncing off it to make sure there's no drips. And if there are, like sometimes I'll just like take a rag and pick it up. But in general, that's thick enough, and I'm putting it on in a thin enough wash that that should be fine. And I, I like you said, it's like how long does it take to dry? It takes like a day, probably like at least a day. So you, you, it's like I'm a kind of person that I want to get shit done now, and this kind of process is painfully slow. So. Beautiful. So you rinse the brush right away because this varnish crap will get you. Okay. So I clean the brush. Now I'm going to show you how to do. I'm going to do the same thing with the blue, just to show you the difference between a warm color and a cool color. Color theory. Warm I and have cool. a, one question: Is the stroke ma uh, matters or does matter? Because you always do the horizontal when you don't do the vertical one. What it's, about this? It, that's one of my obsessive compulsive tendencies. I don't know why I do that. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter right? because it's smooth is going to be smooth. It, yeah, it's going to be. It, it, in theory, whether you uh, do vertical or horizontal brush strokes should not matter because it's so thin that I don't want to see brush strokes. Okay. Like you're just applying a layer. Okay. okay? Got it. And that's why it has to be thin. If it's too thick, like with liquid right out of the bottle, mm -hmm. it's going to sh those brush strokes will show. Okay. So this will. Pr so if you do it vertically, it should work too. I just like going horizontal. Okay. It's a physical thing. Like okay. I prefer doing that. Okay. No, I just yeah, it's pressure. like it's just a thing. Like we all have our different ways of painting. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a, just again a tiny bit of blue like that. Okay. A little ultramarine goes a long way. And I'll do the same thing. Add just a little bit of blue into the glaze here. And I want to make sure it's kind of, you know, I'm trying to make it just for demo purposes about the same level of transparency. But you can see, and that this is a good way to do it when you're mixing it on a palette, you can see whether it's thick or not. Like here it's thicker, or a little too thick. Don't do this. Because don't do that, why? Because you might get paint into the raw medium. If you have this in a jar, you could just pour it out. But I want it to be relatively thin. So I'm going to do the same thing on another part of the painting over here. And you can see it, it needs a little more. That's a little too transparent. Is that turpenoid? Yeah, it's turpenoid. There you go. So now, this side, it's a cooler. Cole, we have a question. Sure. What, what was the question? It's, it's not a question, but he dumped the terpenoid on the palette, not the... Not terpenoid. That wasn't terpenoid. No? That was the mixture. Were you here for the whole yeah, yeah. thing? But that's the mixture. Grab, that's the glaze. You, you grabbed I the wrong cup. Yeah. I think the cup you <laughs> poured out was yeah. terpenoid. You poured out the wrong one. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, damn it. Sorry. I'm like, well, no wonder it looks so runny. <laughs> okay. There. I and again, I hope the smell doesn't bother you guys. It's so, like, believe me, it's like, it could be a lot worse. I, the one thing I really want to show you guys how to do, and I really can't, is to use uh, paint butter which is an uh, oleopasto gel medium that's made by the Lucas Company, and it is super, like, if I opened that tube in here, everybody would run for the hills. It has real stand turpentine in it, and it's, like, really intense. And I used to use it in my stu old studio downtown, and I would make these giant paintings that were full of impasto, and I did it one day, and I left, and I came back the next day, and there were notes all over my door from everyone else in the building. They're like, what the fuck are you, like, you're trying to kill us all, you know, you're like putting up this horrible I'd be vapors, too. huh? I'd be pissed too. I, and, and they were, I, they should be, they should yeah, they, be. It's like, I, I kill yourself, know. go to the desert and do your paintings. Exactly, I didn't realize how bad it was going to be. And 
it was like, hope no, and, and no one was there when I did it. I like, hopefully no one will come. You know, and, it, and, and by the time anyone, by the time anyone else in the studio shows up, it'll be, it'll, it'll have, because um, it does eventually, as they say in the business, <laughs> off gas, where the vapors will eventually dissipate, but that didn't happen. Winsor so. Newton makes uh, two different ones. They're in tubes. They make an oleo pasto as well, which is a little bit softer. Mm -hmm. There we in go. Pasto, that, that and it nice. doesn't smell as bad as the one you were talking about. Yeah, it does. I mean, but it's, but it the Lucas oil butter is the key. It works so great. That's nice. It's the best. But the, the oil butter. <laughs> but pasto? it's it's lethal. <laughs> like like most things in painting, the best stuff is like the most lethal. Like um, a polyester casting resin. If you guys ever put acrylic paint in polyester casting resin, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Oh, really? It'll kill anything within. 200 yards. <laughs> I, to, I, I would have to, I told, used to tell my neighbors, I'm like, you should um, put your dog inside. And I was doing it like outside. I'm like, put your dog in, don't let the kids play this afternoon. And after a while, that means you're a bad neighbor, right? Okay, so here's, so there's the orange, here's the blue. There, that's better, okay. So see, it's like, it's very subtle, but it cools the brown down. So you have this warm, this is her original brown, her underpainting. That's a warmer brown, and this is a cooler one. And yeah, it's really subtle. I mean, you could go thicker, you know, like you get to try, oh, I want a little more paint in there. You know, make it bluer if you want to. But you still, when you're glazing, this is the hard part, is you need to resist the temptation to lay down too much paint. Because the end result over time in doing multiple layers of it, it, it I, it's hard for me to sell it to you now. But it's true, it's really beautiful. Like I'm doing a big landscape right now and I'm just like, this is a nightmare. I mean, I've been working on this painting for like a month and I've gotten nowhere because I have to keep glazing. I'm like, okay, another layer. And I look at another layer, another layer. And it takes weeks. And now all of a sudden I'm getting to the point where I'm like, oh my God, this is like gorgeous. Like I never could have done this if I just went in and did it all of Prima. So there you go, like that. So that's glazing. So you can warm it up, you can cool it down. Um, you, you, and you can use any color you want. You have a green, it's like whatever you're trying to do. Um, for landscapes and stuff, uh, that's where I first noticed the payoff was I did a small painting, smaller than, no, about this big. A painting of, uh, of stuff in my backyard. And there are some deep shadows in the bushes in the background of the painting. I should bring it in, I have it in the studio now. And it's done now. But, um, but I did like layers and layers and layers of greens with like blues. I, I would do a glaze of like ultramarine and then a glaze of brown and a glaze of like a darker green. And I just built it up, built it up, built it up. And it is just gorgeous. I'm just like, oh my God, this looks so good. But you don't get the payoff right away. It, it took like five coats and several weeks for me to get to the point where I'm like, okay, now it looks good. So I want to caution you guys. It's like in a classroom situation, you're trying to work fast and you do have to let it dry like for at least a day. So it is time consuming. It's super beautiful. Like, don't get me wrong. It's super beautiful, but it does take some time. But those of you who are curious, like, oh, you're talking about glazing. How do we do it? That's how you do it. That's the mixture. That's how you do it. Okay. Flesh tones. Okay. Is everybody cool on glazing? Any questions? Thank you for calling me out. I'm not using the wrong thing. But this, this never happens in the studio because I have dedicated containers for each thing. Like I keep this stuff in one of those mason jars with a little like latch, you know, with a rubber seal. Mm -hmm. So like it doesn't smell. So I just, ding, <laughs> bunk, you know, I go home and like the, and the studio smells fine, you know, except uh, then my studio mate comes in and he goes, what the fuck are you doing in here? What's that smell? Like, sorry, dude. I have a question. Sure. So should you first lay down all the colors on her portrait and then do glazing or do glazing first? You're doing now. It depends on what you're doing. Honestly, I'm just I'm using her more as a, I'm using one painting as a demo for two demos. I would normally not recommend that she do much glazing now. I would rather she worry about the the flesh tones now. Um, but normally you want to do the it's the, again uh, I don't have my pen. I said this in beginning painting, and for those of you that didn't take me for beginning or and may not have heard this before do you know the whole term like like fat over lean thick over thin is it okay or not okay you always want to build up the thinnest layers first that's why you do an underpainting that's just brown with turpenoid 
you know, it's a really thin washy layer and you build up layers of glaze first usually and then the paint gets thicker and thicker and thicker and so that's the thing is I love thick paint and so when I'm doing this it makes me crazy because I can't do anything fun. It's like I'm just doing these like and like they barely change it's like it's red and then you're like is that red enough? And you're like I, I, I don't know I have to let it sit. I, I'll have to come back in two days before I can judge that. It's like, okay, because I want to get in there and do highlights and goopy stuff. You have to do that at the end, at the very end. And you can glaze over the goopy stuff, but it has to be totally dry. And then that takes a really long time. Anyway, so yeah, painting's hell. It's like so oil painting. Lean, so first lean and then thick? Yeah, f fat over lean, thick over thin. So you always build up the thin layers and then do the thick on top. Also, those of you who are doing, um, oil, like you're doing oil on top of acrylic. Oil on top of acrylic, fine. Can you do that? Uh, uh, oil on top of acrylic. Oh, really? Acrylic on top of oil, never. Yeah. Okay, well, if you're... That doesn't make any sense. Not everybody knows. I had this happened yesterday. It's like never assume that everyone knows everything in the class. I had one student yesterday. They were doing an, an assignment based on pop culture kind of thing, and I'm, and you have to bring in references to show everybody what you're using. And I go, and so this is based on what? And and I know what it is. And the and he goes, oh, it, you know, it's it's on South Park. And I and I'm like, okay. He goes, well, everybody, where's your reference material? Well, everybody knows what South Park is. I'm like, yeah, but maybe not. And then somebody brought something in, and they didn't know what it was. And it was like, you know, well, everybody knows about you know Futurama, and yeah. some of the students yeah. are like, I don't know that. Yeah, it's like, so no, I, you're absolutely right. It, like. It makes, sense, it makes sense, but not everybody knows. So that's why I'm saying it again. Never, ever do acrylic on top of oil. It's a water-based, fast-drying medium on something that's oil-based and slow-drying. Bad, bad, bad things happen. The other way around is fine. Why would you do that? To save money on oil paint? Or you know, oh, like why would you why do would you acrylic use, on like, oil? Yeah, because you're crazy. I don't know. Like, no, I, no, no, I don't like, no, 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 not acrylic on oil, but like oil on oil acrylic. On top of acrylic. Uh, maybe to save money. Yeah, I, I, I like. I'm one of those guys where I'm like, yeah, it, it's either to, like, it's either an oil painting. Like, I, I'm more of a purist in the sense right. that I, if I'm going to do an oil painting, it's an oil painting. Right. If I'm doing a gouache painting, it's a gouache painting. Mm -hmm. But many artists love to mix it up. Uh, good friends of mine, abstract painters, they put glitter in their stuff. I think that is the most awful thing ever. <laughs> I like that. I go, really? You put glitter in your paint? These abstract paints, there's fucking glitter in these things? It's so, it's so cheesy. Like, what are you painting? A unicorn. <laughs> you know, like, if you're going to do that. And, and you know what? Those paintings that my friends do with the glitter in them, those sell for $10,000. And what do mine sell for? So what do I know? That's why I'm like, you know what? I think it's lame and cheesy, but everyone loves it. I think it depends on the painting, right? And it depends on the buyer, and it depends on the viewer. Like, and right. some people, everyone loves Stephanie's paintings because they have glitter in them. <laughs> and I, I would like rather, you know, stab myself with needles than, you know, Painting. than do that. But she loves it, and it appeals to something in her childhood. I don't know. Anyway, so it's a good question. Like, why? I have no idea. But people, like, if you want to do multimedia. Like, uh, what's his name? Anselm Kiefer. Like, he puts like twigs and crap in his paintings, like like dirt, you know, and paint. Like, like, why would you do that? I don't know, but they look cool. You know, are they super fragile and really dangerous and impossible to restore? Does Anselm Kiefer care? No, those things go for like a million dollars. Like, he's like, I do not care what, so bad, you fix it. You buy it, you deal with it. I don't care, I make another one. Anyway, so uh, yeah, really, it's like if you can do whatever the hell you want, but just in terms of like chemical nature, don't put acrylic on top of oil. You can't do it. I mean, you can, but bad things will happen. So, and I don't know why. To either save money or speed things up. Although, if you're doing an underpainting in oil, it'll dry pretty much fast. Right. You know, I, I don't know. I don't, it's a good. It's a great question. Okay, so glazing now flesh tones. This is really important for those of you, those of you that are not, that are landscape painters, you're like, like I don't care what Cole says now because it's like it doesn't matter. But it, it actually, this is whether or not you are painting portraits or flesh tones, this is a good lesson in complementary mixing. This is color theory that you guys don't get, which is criminal that they don't teach you guys. Can you cover that smelly thing? Hmm? Can you cover the smelly thing? I can't. Um, or 
I can pour it in. Yeah. Um, I d I'm trying to think. Do I? Um, I actually do want to use it for this next demo. When, uh, good question. When I'm done, I'll put it in the toxic thing, and and then we're done, and then it'll cover it up. Okay. And think about it. how much did I use? Really, it's like I used like that much, you know. So be glad we didn't make more. But I, I will clean it up. And I will, pardon me, I won't clean them. I will dispose, dispose it, it properly. Yeah, in you know, the toxic, but no, and that's, no, a good, a very good point. That's what the toxic waste bins are for. Don't put this down the drain. Don't do that. Please. Can I keep it because I need it? I have it covered. Uh, yeah, later. Later on. Give me $15. Okay, that's and fine. You can have that's it. fair. See, she'll do it. She is, she is like this woman was lusts after painting. Like I don't care, I'll, whatever it costs. <laughs> yes, I'll give it. Do you want to keep it? Yeah. Do you have a container to put yeah, it in? I have container. Okay, there, there you go. Wonderful. Yeah. No, and honestly, that's what I do. It's like I keep it, but I keep it tightly sealed because I don't like it either. Yeah. All right. It is, but it to just to so you know it's it is not toxic like a solvent. It's just a glue. So it, it won't, it's not going to hurt you. Okay. Like a solvent. Honestly, that shit. it's odorless. Mm. Yeah. And you know what that means? That means you just don't know that you're breathing toxic shit. Exactly. Sorry, it's toxic. And it's like, yeah. oh, we can't use turpentine. I'm like, maybe you should because then you know. It's like, like, what's carbon monoxide? It'll kill you. It's odorless, colorless, and tasteless. It'll kill you. Uh, so I don't want to say that this is deadly, but it's like, to, to, because it doesn't smell doesn't mean it's not still bad. Right. You know. Anyway, that's why. Uh, Stephanie, glitter girl, my friend, she cannot be in my studio for more than five minutes, even when I'm not painting, just to be in the room. I'm like, will you do a studio visit? She goes, yeah, I just need to come in, I need to look, and then we need to walk out. We need to go somewhere and talk about this elsewhere, because she can't be in the room. She's so sensitive. I'm like, cool. I'm starting to you. get dizzy. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, the windows are all open, right? I know, that's why, that's why I went up there. Okay, here we go. Orange and blue are complementary colors, which means they're opposite one another on the color wheel, and when mixed together, they make desaturated complementary neutrals, which is more information than you probably wanted, and this is only a tiny fraction of what's in color theory. But if you want to make a flesh tone, you only need four tubes of paint, and there they are. If it's oil, you want cad orange, cadmium that is short for, ultramarine blue, what I what is called, in um, any magenta will do. Gamblin makes quinacridone magenta, like which is a fancy name, but it's, it's my favorite one. But they make other magentas too. It's basically a rose color, okay, and white. With, by alter, with those four colors, Altering the proportions will give you any flesh tone for any human on the planet. I don't care if your ancestry is African, Asian, Indian, South American, North European, Inuit, it doesn't matter. You, if you mix the proportions properly, anything. Because I did a whole long series of portraits years ago and I did like friends of mine that were African American, that were Korean, that were Latino, that were white from like Holland, they were all pinky and stuff, everything, and that's all you need. You do need to adjust the proportions properly, but that's all you need. Mm -hmm. If you're working with gouache, then you use orange, ultramarine, rose violet, also titanium white, that's all you need, okay? And it allows you to warm it up, cool it down, lighten it, darken it, whatever you need to do. This is what happens. It also allows you to work with a very saturated base, which is like orange, cat orange, a super saturated color. So is ultramarine blue, a very powerful and strong blue. So you can work with, you can get everything from very saturated light and dark colors. Warm and cool, light and dark, both saturated. So this is why I recommend you do this and don't use brown, okay? Raw umber, burnt umber, underpaintings, fine. You're just blocking out the values, that's fine. But when you get into color, you want to control everything. Light, dark, saturation, desaturation, warm, cool, okay? So, orange, blue, mix them together, what do you get? What do you need some more to do? Always need titanium white, always. Oh crap, ugh, something spilled. I think it was the liquid. 
and that's the varnish. All right. So when you mix these colors together, this is a whole assignment, by the way, in complementary mixing. Um, you take orange, you take a little blue, right? Who's filming? Oh, there you go. Hands about full. Yeah. And there you go. Brown, yo. Okay. Add white. Okay. When literally when I and then depending on your the part of your body, um, if you, whether you're man or woman, your lips are pink. I don't care whether you're wearing cosmetics or not, and boys too. You always need a little bit, okay. but you can control and get a flesh tone, and I can make this warmer, cooler, lighter, darker, whatever. Uh, when I was doing self portraits, which now I am so old and ugly. I to make them. Um, I literally would mix the color and do this. And like literally, I would like put it on my skin and go, okay, how is that? It's too dark. Okay. It's too dark and it's too brown and it's too cool. I am redder and orangier and whiter a little bit. So I'm gonna just, you know, and I would just adjust and just keep adjusting until I got something that was approximating my own basic flesh tone. Yeah, too orange, it's more red. Anyway, but you can, uh, uh, that's what I would do. Literally, I was trying to, I was doing color matching like you would at Home Depot or, uh, or like uh, at a paint store. It's like, oh, I wanna match this color. It's like, I'm matching my flesh. Now I got like pink all over it. But anyway, and again, you can see that you can either make it really, really light, like my Dutch friends, you know, probably look more like this. You know, like, like people from Amsterdam, you know, have this horrible, like, super pale, scary skin. Yeah. But they're really good speed skaters. What is with those people? Like, they're the best speed skaters on earth. Have you guys ever been to Holland? You know yes. why they are? Okay, first of all, they live in Holland. So that's all they do is skate, right? But they're also they're also all nine feet tall. Like everyone in Holland is like six foot four. From I haven't been, but my friends were doing business in Amsterdam. They're like they are the coldest people ever. If you're an American, good luck, because they are just like nothing's funny ever. Like it's just like why are you laughing? You know, like, and everyone is super super tall. So they have really long legs. Okay, and they skate, like that's their whole culture. So that they skate, they have long legs, they win. Okay, that's a short track, no chance. That, that's why you want, who's the, there's some big Korean star. Like all the short track people are, they're short. They're like little people and they're fast. You know, they just, meow, 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 meow. but speed skaters uh, over long distances are these crazy Dutch people who have super pale pink skin. Except for the gold went to a Canadian and the Netherlands, God. Uh, it's not me. That is it's not, not you. Yeah, that not is so my, not. Okay. It's so, Dutch. for example, we're talking about Canadians and Dutch <laughs> and this color. That <laughs> is not Dutch, you, girl. Okay. The girls by the rivers. It's not my skin. Now, you can. And now, what you can do is um, somebody give me a small bristle brush. Like, this is good for glazing, but I need something smaller and stiffer. Just like a little round bristle. And once you mix up a batch of this, just have like have your orange, your blue, your rose violet, or your magenta. Uh, just a little guy. Like this guy's good. Thank you. I feel like I'm more yellow than that. Don't you, use, don't you mix yellow at all in that? No. You can. You can a little, a little bit. Yeah, you know, especially if you are in the sun. Um, if you are in direct sunlight um, and the, the sun is shining on your skin, you probably do want like white and yellow, more of that, because you're getting a different kind of read. When we're in indirect light like this, you probably wouldn't have that much uh, yellow. But yeah, you can. I'm pretty yellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gambling, yeah. you're yellow. really beautiful, warm white, mm -hmm. and it's a yellow one. But ti the thing about titanium is it's opaque. Yeah, it's not so, opaque. This yeah. is translucent. The gambling one that I was talking so let's see. Nice. Let's see. Nice. Come here. Not, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Not perfect. Close. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't doing that on purpose. We just got lucky. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. 
So that's kind of a base, and I would keep that pile there. Now, if, if it's under light, you might add like white and yellow. If it's in shadow, you want to add a little more blue. You know, you can alter it, but you have a good base color right here. And you're looking at it going, God, that looks so rosy and pinky. So pink. Well, that's it's also because of what we talked about with you, is the contrast with the burnt umber that's underneath. So right. by contrast, it looks pinker, right. but when the whole thing is that way, it'll probably look normal. Probably look the way your colors will be different when you put in that dark background. No, I'm There's, scared, man. That's also color. <laughs> that's also color theory. It's called simultaneous contrast. I should teach a color theory class for painters. I swear to God. Yeah. You should teach us something like Friday every, like just a little. Like bit. a little color theory. Yeah. Thing? Yeah. yeah. Why not? Okay. Now, and this is actually where okay, where you could do glazing. Honestly, when you're doing again, like. You, Jude's got am ambitions and she wants to do things like kind of quickly. Normally, you would glaze this also. You know, I would take a little bit. Sorry, 40 minutes. She's like, God damn it, when's he gonna put that stinky stuff away? Yes. I'm almost, I'll be done in just a little bit. Okay, I know. But, but, you, but so you would, use, you would use this as a glaze also. And actually, this is, a, there's a technique called grisaille where like you do your painting in grayscale like gr grisaille, it's like gray, and you do a whole cell portrait only in black and white, and then you go back in on top and do this on top of it. Now that's a little too thick, but you, you can see it's like, yeah, yeah it's too thick. So, uh, you so you don't want to wreck the juice paint. It's okay, I don't mind. But, no, but you, okay, but you, you can see that now, you want it this thin if you're glazing because I can still see, you know, like the ring, like her underpainting underneath it. So I actually would, I would, again, like I did here, you want to really keep it, that's too opaque. Okay, you my question really is though, when the wrinkle, when is going to do There you go, like this. Okay, see? Like I'm putting this on and spreading it out. I can still see the underpainting. But it's a real light glaze. Okay. Now I'm just looking at you because I now I want it to be a little lighter up here, right? Okay. Just like that. And the good news about this is it is time consuming, okay? But you've got a glaze layer like this, you know, I'm kind of rubbing it in. That'll probably dry in about a day. And then if you don't like it, or you're like, I want it to be warmer, you just glaze over it with a little, you know, a little more orange. If you want it to be cooler, you glaze over it with a little blue. If you want it lighter, you add like yellow, or you do a glaze. And you can just keep building up layer after layer after layer after glaze, and it looks so great, but it'll take you like two months. And again, back in the day, they didn't do anything else. They got up when the sun came up, and they painted. And then they ate at some point, and then the <laughs> sun went down, and they went to bed. On Sunday, they went to church. That's all they did. They were men, okay? They didn't do anything. They didn't cook, they didn't Sounds clean, cool. they didn't raise the children, they didn't have to go to work. They, they stayed in Amsterdam their entire lives. They walked like four blocks. That was like their big journey, okay? They didn't go anywhere, they didn't do anything. They just painted and engraved and drew all day, every day, until they died at the end, okay? We need more complex yeah. lives. So I want to stress that. It's like, how did they do that? It's like, uh, they also had, like, you also lived in a time where you could get the plague and die tomorrow. I mean, like, there was a big, like, the Catholic Church was pretty important because everyone's like, could be dead tomorrow. Here comes the plague. Or everything would be fine, and you'd go for a walk on the beach on the beautiful North Sea, and you're like, oh, it's so great to live in Holland. And the next day, you go out to the same beach, and there's 16 ships from the Spanish Armada, and they just came out of nowhere, and they come to your town, and they burn it to the ground, and they kill everyone there. <laughs> and it just happens just like that. There's, a, there's no internet. There's no warning. You're like, oh, what am I going to have for dinner today? Nothing. You're going to get stabbed in the head with a knife, you know, and you're dead. <laughs> and then the, and your house gets burned to the ground, and everybody else's. So it's like, that's all they did. They just did this all day. And it's like, better do it fast, you know, like, better make it beautiful because we could be dead soon. So, and, and they were, again, I want to stress because it's mostly women in the room. They were men, they didn't do anything. Do you think Rembrandt had to like, Rembrandt's wife's like, you, you know, you got the kids today. Like you, you cook dinner tonight. Rembrandt's like, fuck you. I'm a man, I do whatever I want. He had, he had a mistress, he, he had a maid, he had a chambermaid, they had people to care for the kids. They didn't do anything. They were artists, they painted all day. That's all they did. 
them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they didn't wash their own clothes. You know, they didn't have to worry about what time they got up. Yeah, they just did whatever the fuck they wanted to. So anyway, there were different times. <laughs> However, if you want to get into like, how did they do it? Technically, this is how they did it. They just like, you know, they didn't have another class to go to. They didn't have to worry about like, you know, going home and getting food for dinner tonight. Or like, you know, what your mother, you know, needs from the store. Like that, it's like, what? Like I'm a painter, that's all I do. Like leave me alone, I'll kill you. Um, anyway, so that's how. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's how to, to make flesh tones. And basically, I'm, just to save time so we don't, I mean, what time is it now? It's like 11? 11.20. Ah, okay, so ba you're doing the same thing with gouache. It's exactly the same thing. It's orange, blue, pink, you know, like a rose color, and white. You're just doing the same thing. The only problem with gouache is it dries fast. Okay. So I, I wouldn't put out as much paint. If you put out this much oil, it'll stay wet and nice for like a day or two. If you're doing the gouache, it's gonna dry in 10 minutes, especially in weather like this. But it's the exact same idea. You know, you do the same thing and you thin it with water if you wanna build up layers. Can you do it with acrylic paint? Like all yes. layering? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, absolutely. Um, you would, I would normally recommend that you use some kind of medium, um, right. but you can just thin it with water and that works, honestly, it looks just as good, you know. It's just it's thinner. If you want to use like a matte medium or a, a gloss medium, uh, the way I'm using the stinky stuff, it's the same, you have that? I don't even know what this is. Yeah, it is, this is the th a medium, but I don't know if it's matte or... What does it say? Slow dry blending medium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably works. You know, just put some paint in. Yeah, and you can build up layers. Basically, Holbein acrylic wash, that's what I use. That's all it's fancy acrylic. That's all it is. Okay. Watercolor is another ball game. If you guys are using watercolor, I can't help you. Or really, I know. It's like I only know how to work with opaque paint. Opaque water-based paint, which is Holbein acrylic wash, acrylic paint of all brands, and oil paint. But I really am not a watercolorist. That's a whole different technique. You have to take a different class for that. I can't help you. I wish I could, but I can't. Besides, that's for Sunday painters. And oh I know what a snob, right? What, what what is it? Dude, acrylic is, uh, sorry, I like watercolor. Yeah. 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 You know how hard so it is. Watercolor is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard. I like it. It's just like, it's beautiful. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just being a yeah. jerk. It's really, I don't know how to do it because it's too damn hard. Yeah. It's like, it really, it's like, if I screw you this up, I can. You can't fuck up, but you can't yeah. fuck up. If you screw up so. with acrylic, you paint over it. Yeah. If you screw mm. up with oil, you paint over it. If you screw up with watercolor, you start all over mm. it. Yeah. And I don't like doing yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> Done? Done. Thank you.